party this morning. Yes! So in Matthew chapter 10, Jesus tells us to be savvy as serpents and pure as doves. We've been talking about this for a long time, I think seven weeks or so. And for those of you who are just joining us or who haven't been following along, our, we've been talking about our inner serpent, which is basically the, wi the worldly wisdom that we gather and glean through life's journey in order to survive and thrive in this complicated world. And our inner dove, well, the dove is a symbol for the Spirit of God. Our inner dove is our essential self that is actually connected and one with the dove, the Spirit of God. And what Jesus is teaching us in this passage is for our inner savvy serpent and our inner dove to work together. Work together. Now, a super churchy thing to say is we only need the dove, right? We only need the dove. All you need is dove. <laughs> da, 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 right? All you need is... But that's not what Jesus says. Jesus says you need your inner serpent. But you need your inner worldly wise, savvy serpent to work alongside your inner dove. Now why? Why do we need both? Well, in this context, Jesus is teaching his disciples how to be leaders. We still call them disciples, right? I mean, how many people went to school? Yet we don't still call you students, even though you're 70 years old now, right? Although you should be a student of life. I mean, I guess that's the message there. We're always disciples. But the intention of discipleship, of studying, is so that we become an expert in our field, if you will. And Jesus is training these disciples so that they can become spiritual leaders. That's the whole point. I mean, he needs spiritual leaders to take over his spiritual movement after he is gone. So in order to be a spiritual leader, he's saying you need both this inner savvy serpent and the inner dove. And they need to work together. So this teaching isn't just for those disciples, it's for us as well. So the context of this is, you are called to be spiritual leaders. Each and every one of you. Now that's one thing I love about the Anabaptist tribe, the Mennonite tribe that I've joined to travel through life with, is they believe in something called the royal priesthood of all believers. And that means it's not just clergy who, you know, who are the spiritual leaders. We are all spiritual leaders. And that's very important because that's what Jesus taught. But in order to be a spiritual leader, you need, your, you need your activated inner savvy serpent and your inner dove and for the two to work together. That's how you become a, a good leader. Now, leadership is an interesting topic. Have you ever heard this question? Are people born leaders or do they become leaders? Are people born leaders or are leaders made? Have you heard that question? Yeah, that's a fairly common question. A lot of research has gone into answering this question over the past few decades. And the current consensus on the data is this. 30% of leadership is genetic. 70% is learned. Now there's some people who are born, you know, we call them natural born leaders. They're born with, with leadership characteristics and traits and qualities. Now, that's only 30%. So what that means is someone who's born with, you know, these natural leadership qualities and traits, if they don't get the other 70%, or at least some of it, by, by studying and being mentored and, and, and learning and working hard at it, even though they're natural born leaders, they can be pretty awful leaders. Maybe you've met one or two of them. No pointing, and not at me. All right, let's move on. What this also means is you can be born without those you know, agreed upon natural leadership qualities and traits. And through hard work and mentorship and discipline and study and learning, you can actually become a really effective leader. I mean, 70%, that's pretty good as far as leadership goes. We can all be effective leaders if we have the right mentors and training. Now that's looking at leadership through the lens of serpent wisdom, worldly wisdom, if you will. But there's another lens through which we can look at leadership, and that's through the lens of Christ or the lens of the dove journey. 
And one of the things the dove journey reveals to us is that we all are natural leaders because your true self is a natural leader. We've talked about that, I don't know, three or four weeks ago. Your true self is a leader. Now the problem is that most of us aren't in tune with our true self. Most of us don't let our natural leader, our true self, lead our lives. Now in order to be a spiritual leader, you need to be in tune with your natural leader within your true self. Now there's a passage of scripture, 1 Timothy 3.5. It says, if a person cannot manage their own household, they're not fit to be a spiritual leader. Now that's traditionally been interpreted, if you can't control your own family, then you have no business trying to lead and manage a congregation. The deeper principle there is, if you can't lead and manage your own inner family, we've been talking about the inner family of parts, if you can't lead and manage your inner household, then you can't be helping lead and manage other people. And that just makes sense, right? Now what's interesting is, is this passage in Timothy mentions both leadership and management. In fact, leaders manage. We need both. We need leading and we need managing. Now one of the inner parts that we've been talking about is the inner manager. The inner manager. In fact, we, we, we've, I think it was three weeks ago, it could have been four weeks ago, we talked quite a bit about the inner parts, but the primary part that you live most of your life in conscious connection with is your inner manager. Your inner manager is that part of you that is trying to keep everything under control. Trying to keep yourself under control. You know, your emotions under control. Your triggers under control. Trying to keep your false beliefs under control. Trying to keep the situation under control. Keep relationships under control. Other people under control. Keep everything under control so that our vulnerable parts, to protect our vulnerable parts so they are not hurt. They don't feel pain, rejection, failure, abandonment, betrayal, so they don't relive past wounds and trauma. So your manager is just always trying to manage every situation, relationship, context, keep things under control. Now to be a good leader, you need a reliable inner manager. That's what Jesus is talking about here, the serpent. And the, the, the inner serpent is, is a bit more broad than your inner manager. But for the most part, your inner manager is that, that savvy serpent, that worldly wise part of you that protects you and keeps everything under control. So I'm going to kind of use those two terms interchangeably today. Now the problem with the inner manager in most of our lives is when it assumes the role of leader in our lives. Because your inner manager is not a leader. It's the manager. And the two are very different. Now what's the difference? Well, I recently read an article, Forbes, Mar Mag uh, Forbes magazine, highlighting a number of differences between leaders and managers. I'm going to read them for you because I think they're helpful. I think they're insightful for what we're talking about. Leaders create vision. Managers create goals. Leaders are change agents. Managers, they maintain the status quo. Leaders are unique. Managers copy. They learn to imitate. Leaders take risks. Managers control and mitigate risk. Leaders think long-term and big picture. Managers think short-term and are focused on the details. Leaders grow, always growing. Managers rely on proven skills, techniques, and abilities. Leaders build relationships. Managers build systems and processes. Leaders coach. Managers direct. 
Here's the reality, every organization needs both. It's not that leaders are good or managers are good and the other. Organizations need both. Need managers, need leaders, and so do you. We all need a leader and a manager within us. Your manager is good. It has a job, it has an important job. Remember the dove journey, we've talked about this before. The dove journey is not about eliminating these other inner parts within us. It's about developing a relationship between these parts, and let's just talk about the manager today, developing a relationship between the manager and your, your true natural leader, your true self. And as that relationship is developed and strengthened, your inner manager begins to trust your, your true self as the leader. And as that happens, your inner parts, including your inner manager, are healed. They move towards being healed. They're renewed. They're transformed. They're set free to do the job they were intended to do. And they have an important job in our lives. So when your inner manager trusts your true self as the leader, it can relax and it can do its job and it stays in its lane. You know what I mean? When your, your inner manager stays in its lane, that means it manages but doesn't assume the role of leader in your life. Now, Jesus calls for us, and I've said this a number of times, not only in this series, but through the past eight years that I've been here. Jesus calls for us to live our lives in conscious connection with our true self, with our inner dove, that essential self that is one with the Spirit. But I don't think it's realistic for you to expect yourself to live in conscious connection with your true self 24 hours a day, seven days a week. In fact, not only is it not realistic, I don't think it's possible. I mean, I think a few people throughout history have maybe done that, like Jesus. But you read through the Bible, the prophets and, and, and the disciples, they're not doing it 24-7, seven, seven days a week. If you look at the, the, you know, the saints or the people we, we think of as saints throughout history, they're not fully present. They're not always in constant connection with the vine all day, every day. And I think it's unrealistic to expect that of yourself. The, the point that Jesus is making here is your inner serpent, which is where you are going to be operating a lot of the time, your inner manager. I mean, that's just the way it is especially in the daily grind of life. I mean, when, you, when you're at work and you're trying to do you know, 10,000 things at the same time, when you're parenting and trying to clean the house, when you're trying to do your banking online and switch internet providers, you know, when you're really at it, you're, not, you're going to be consciously connected with your inner manager because you need your inner manager to get stuff done. That's not a bad thing. What Jesus is calling us to do is is make sure our inner manager is working together with our inner dove. That there is a relationship of trust between the two. If your manager trusts the leadership of your true self, then you can trust your inner manager to do its job and stay in its lane. The key is to develop and maintain a consistent relationship between your inner parts and your true self, Christ in you. And that's what the spiritual disciplines are about. The purpose of spiritual disciplines are to consistently, not constantly, but consistently, consciously connect us to the vine, to Christ in us, to our true self, our dove that is one with the Spirit. That's the intention. And the, and the point of, of doing that, the more that consistently we have that connection and, and invite the parts within us, like our inner manager, into a relationship of trust with the true self that we're connecting with, like I said, those parts begin to change and they take on their intended role. Now, later on, I'll probably talk about how many of our spiritual disciplines actually don't connect us to the vine. They actually do something else, but we'll talk about that maybe next week. But conscious and consistent connection is the key, not constant. I don't think that's realistic. 
that you're, you know, that you're going to be, I think it's dangerous to even think that you're in that. If, if you think that you are constantly connected to the spirit, to the vine within you, well, we'll talk about that later on. There's a good chance you are not. Let's put it that way. Conscious, consistent connection is the key. Now, the problem for most of us is that the true self isn't the leader in our lives. The manager is. Most of us are in that, even, even those of us. Remember I talked about the difference between baptism in the Spirit and walking in the Spirit? We can be awakened to the reality of the Spirit of God within us. That doesn't mean we are consciously living our lives in, in, in conscious connection with the Spirit within us. In fact, most of the time we are not. And for most of us, the leader in our lives, the leader that all our parts, that our conscious mind trusts, is not the true self, but the manager. That's just the, that's just the way it is. And the problem with this, well, there are many, but the manager was never intended to do the job of the leader. In fact, it's doing two jobs. Have any of you ever had to do your job and somebody else's full-time job? That's not a good situation to be in, and it's not sustainable. And when we depend on our inner manager to also be the leader of our lives, well, it's no wonder we're in the state we're in a lot of the time. Our inner manager is, is tired. It's weary. It's exhausted. It's frustrated. It gets depressed. It wonders, what's the point? It gets anxious. I mean, this is, it's working overtime. And, and, and the problem is it's not just doing two jobs. It's doing its job and a job that it is not even remotely capable of doing. So the, if, when we think of our inner manager, your primary attitude should be compassion because you're abusing it. <laughs> you're overworking it. Managers, our inner, inner manager needs a leader. And the leader is the true self, Christ in us. Now, how can we tell the difference? whether we are operating in conscious connection with our true self or our savvy, wise inner manager. Someone asked me this a couple weeks ago. Said, when I'm, when I'm tuning in and I think I'm tuning into my true self, Christ in me, how can I tell if I'm tuning into my true self, Christ in me, or my wise, savvy manager? That's a good question. I would encourage you to ask yourself these questions when you're tuning in. First question, am I fully present? Am I fully present in this moment? If you are fully present, you're in tune with your true self. Next question, am I sensing my oneness with God? Am I sensing my oneness with Christ? Am I sensing my oneness with other people around me? Even the people who might be part of the problem. Am I sensing oneness with the conservatives and the liberals? Democrats and Republicans? My enemies, even my enemies. Am I sensing oneness with the animals, with the trees, with the rivers, with God's creation? Am I sensing the flow of spirit, the surge of the fruit of the spirit? Am I feeling and sensing an upsurge of peace, patience, love, joy, kindness, self-control, gentleness, faithfulness. Am I sensing compassion, curiosity? That's a lot of questions. And if you can answer yes to all of them, I'm going to assume you're in tune with your true self. If you're answering them honestly. We're pretty good at self-deceiving ourselves, right? But here's the thing. As you grow, as you, and by grow, I mean as you develop and maintain a consistent relationship of trust between your inner manager and your true self, 
your, your inner manager does heal. It changes. It is transformed. It is set free. So there's a good chance that as, as you grow and you tune in, you, you can be tuning into your inner manager and still answer yes to some of these questions. Because your inner manager is being influenced by its relationship with the true self. Does that make sense? Now, it's, it's, here's another important side note. It's pretty easy for the manager to be feeling peace and, and bliss and one when everything's under control, right? In fact, that's, that's the attachment the manager has. When everything's under control, I feel happy, I feel at peace, I feel, pa I'm, I'm perfectly patient because there's nothing making me impatient, right? The real test is, is in the squeeze of life, in the stress of life, when you feel the pressure of deadlines or conflict looming, or you're, you're, you're too busy, then ask yourself, am I fully present? Am I feeling one with God? Am I feeling one with these people who are making my life miserable right now? Am I feeling one with, with the creation? Am I feeling the flow of spirit? Am I feeling peace? Love? In the, in the squeeze of life, ask yourself. And if you're in tune with your manager, the, the answers are not going to be. You, you, it, you probably, even if you're prone to self-deception, you're probably not deceive yourself in that moment. Here's the, the key difference between your inner manager and your, your inner leader, your true self. Your manager is focused on managing, keeping everything under control. Your true self is focused by being fully present. Fully present. Entering the flow of the oneness. So if you're having a problem with someone, it's at work, relate, whatever, your manager is going to be trying to manage that problem, fix that problem. Your true self is going to be focused by being fully present with that problem into that person. And a part of that means, being fully present means acceptance. Now here's the thing, you can do both. You can do both, you can be, in fact, that's the goal that Jesus is talking about. To have your inner manager, your inner savvy serpent, and your inner dove working together. You can be in a conflict, in a problem, where you are fully present with the people involved. You're fully present with what's going on, yet you're still trying to manage. You're still using the wisdom that you've gleaned through the years and the tactics and tools to try and manage and fix. You can be both. In fact, I think that that is Jesus' intention here in this teaching. Be savvy as serpents. And as pure as doves, have these two work together. Now, how do these two work together? Well, I'm going to talk about that next Sunday. And we're going to come back to that Forbes list because I think it's a really helpful tool to help us discern which, which is more active in our lives. The inner manager or the true self, which is our inner leader. Thank you. Yeah.